Today I have an interesting one for you. We're gonna be talking about Dr. Phil, and if you're not aware, there has been some things that have been going on behind the scenes on the Dr. Phil show, allegedly, for a while now. And I think I need to shed a little bit of light on this, but please keep in mind that a lot of these things, if not most of them, are all just allegations. There is no proof that these things have happened, and I need to say that to protect myself because these things are really bad. The accusations, they probably couldn't get much worse. With all of that being said, some of the topics that we may be talking about in this video could potentially be disturbing to some viewers, so please watch at your own discretion. Dr. Phil was born Philip Calvin McGraw on September 1st, 1950 in Benita, Oklahoma, to his parents, Joseph J. McGraw Jr. and Anne Geraldine. He has two older sisters by the names of Deanna and Donna, and one younger sister by the name of Brenda. He probably got his interest in the field that he's currently in because his father was actually trying to pursue his career in psychology. Now, while his dad was trying to pursue his career in psychology, he ended up moving the family to Kansas. That is where Dr. Phil attended Shawnee Mission North High School, playing as a linebacker on the football team. He would go on to earn a scholarship to the University of Tulsa, where he would continue playing football. At this time, he was dating a girl by the name of Debbie Higgins, and the two of them were actually quite the pair because he was a football player and she was a cheerleader. They had that whole football cheerleader relationship going on. Debbie his parents were actually really strict and had rules that she couldn't date until she was 16 years old. So when she finally reached that age and her and Phil, we're calling him Phil in this video because he's not actually a licensed doctor, which we'll get into, but Debbie and Phil, when they went to go on their first date when she finally turned 16, they were five minutes late to getting her home. And this resulted in her parents being furious and Debbie getting grounded. So during the month of her being grounded, her and Phil continued to talk on the phone and help build their relationship that way because it was the only way that they could communicate at the time. Debbie described Phil as being a very sensitive and kind boyfriend, so she didn't have anything bad to say about him at this time. Now, prior to Phil's graduation, he married Debbie Higgins at Roland Park Southside Presbyterian Church, which was Debbie's childhood church. That's when how he was as a boyfriend began to change. He might have been okay as a boyfriend, but as soon as he became a husband, it wasn't the same. Apparently, Phil became very controlling and he wouldn't let her have any say so in what went on in the family business. Wanting her to stay home and take on more of a housewife role, he didn't want her having any sort of control in the family business or to have any say so in anything. He just wanted her to stay home, sit pretty, and worry about her duties there and not get involved in anything else. A family member of Debbie described their marriage as Debbie was supposed to be the dutiful wife who just sits around and waits for him to come home. The typical 50s wife kind of leave it to beaver. And to go off of this, which is even worse, he allegedly pressured her into lifting weights to change her bust line. So he was one of those men that would like talk down about what his wife looked like and try and get her to work out or eat differently to look a certain way. He was that type of guy. Debbie would go on to allege that Dr. Phil told her that he didn't have the mental capacity to talk to her when he came home. So their relationship started to really fade out. He would just work and when he was home, there was no communication between the two of them. And that's just not a healthy marriage or dynamic for anybody. After they had taken a trip to Topeka of Falls where throughout the whole trip he ignored her, Debbie said, that's how a bad marriage goes bad. They beat you down, beat you down, and you start to question yourself. On top of this, she had came home one day and the neighbors had approached her and told her that Phil had been bringing women home when she wasn't there. She went on to confront her husband about this, who didn't deny it, but he went on to say that it didn't change his feelings towards her and that she needed to grow up. Debbie was quoted saying, when I confronted him about his infidelities, he didn't deny these girls and told me that it had nothing to do with his feelings towards me to grow up, that that's just the way it was in the world. She ended up leaving him in 1973 and I'm glad she got out of that relationship because a lot of women stay trapped in these relationships where they're just continuously beaten down until they feel like they can't leave. But she left him in 73, ending their three-year marriage. The same year she left him is the same year that Phil met his current wife, 
Robin Joe Jameson. Phil never would go on to make much of a comment about his first wife at all, and he never addressed the allegations that she had made against him as the type of husband that he allegedly was. And I found this to be interesting because regardless of how he was as a husband to his first wife, which was very misogynistic, controlling, telling her that she needed to work out, him cheating on her with multiple women, he just didn't sound like he was a very good husband. But regardless of that, he goes on to have article after article, some of them handwritten by himself on his website, Dr. Phil, offering advice to infidelities in marriages. It has articles titled with Will Your Man Cheat, Seven Questions to Ask If Your Partner Has Been Unfaithful, and Advice for Cheating Husbands and Their Partners. The description of the last one being, if you have repeatedly cheated or are the partner of a cheater and can't seem to forgive or break off the unhealthy relationship, Dr. Phil has advice. He offers up a lot of advice to men who cheat on their wives or to women who cheat on their husbands. And maybe he can offer this advice because of his personal experience in being that type of man. Like I can picture his wife reading these articles he's written about infidelity and rolling her eyes. Phil would graduate from Midwestern State University in Wichita Falls, Texas in 1975 with a BA in psychology. He'd go on to earn an MA in experimental psychology the following year. He also married his current wife, Robin, that same year in 1976, which was three years after they had met and three years after his divorce with Debbie. In 1979, he got a PhD degree in clinical psychology from North Texas State University. He also apparently is a private pilot, so he has that under his belt. I didn't actually know that he flew planes, so that's kind of an interesting fact to throw in there. It was in 1995 that Oprah Winfrey hired Dr. Phil's legal consulting firm, C CSI. This was to prepare her for a trial where she was accused of causing a mob mentality in her studio audience. She was apparently producing a story about the safety of beef. She ended up winning the case in 1998 and invited Phil to appear on her show, which ended up being extremely successful. This is when Dr. Phil began appearing on the Oprah show regularly as a relationship and life strategy expert. Four years after this, he would launch his own daily television show, Dr. Phil. He would bring on various guests and offer them advice on an array of different topics. And it sounds great, but his advice and methods that he would offer on this show has garnered a lot of criticism throughout the years from employees and from people who were actually cast on the show. So before we get into these allegations against Dr. Phil, I want to explain to you guys about him not actually being a doctor at all. Because when I found this out, I was shook because it's a little bit misleading to have a television show that is marketed with your name and the beginning of it being Dr you're offering advice to all of these people and getting them therapy and framing your whole show as something to help people, but you're not actually a doctor at all. It's a bit misleading. When you go on the Dr. Phil show, you actually have to sign a contract that says that you're aware that he's not actually treating you. And this is obviously because he doesn't have a license to medically treat anybody whatsoever. So you're probably like, how does he get away with having a show Dr. Phil? If he's not actually a doctor, how does that work? It's because in the state of California, he's actually considered an entertainer. And because the show is marketed as entertainment and they're signing those waivers, it's actually completely legal to do what he's doing. He's not claiming to be a psychologist, so he's not in violation of the California laws. And if you recall, I was telling you guys how he went to school for all of these things and graduated with BAs, PhDs. So how does he not have a license? Because obviously he previously used to. He actually gave up his license in the state of Texas in 1989. Now, why would he do that? <laughs> There were some things going on around that time, but his reasoning for saying why he did it wasn't connected to those reasons. So I'm just gonna tell you guys both things. Dr. Phil publicly said, I retired my license. I don't need a license. I've chosen instead to pursue another course and use of my education. He was accused by a former therapy client of having an inappropriate relationship with her around the same time that he gave up his license. And also at this time, he was married to Robin. 
this patient had actually reported him to the Texas State Board Examiners of Psychologists and the document references an inappropriate dual relationship. There are no other details in this, so it doesn't mean that it was an intimate relationship or a physical relationship. All we know is that it was some sort of inappropriate relationship. Now, Dr. Phil actually has a controversy related to Britney Spears as well from something that he had done in 2008. He received a criminal criminal complaint for practicing psychology without a license or certification and violating doctor-patient confidentiality. This was due to an incident where he was visiting Britney Spears when she was in the hospital. Visited her because he was attempting to get her and her family involved in an episode of the Dr. Phil show, have an intervention episode. After his visit with Britney, not only did he talk to the press, but he also went on to make a statement on his website. In connection to that, he has continued to receive a lot of criticism and accusations that he is profiting off of and exploiting his guests. In 2017, there was a joint investigation by the Boston Globe and the medical news site STAT. It exposed disturbing allegations of the treatment of Dr. Phil's guests who were struggling at the time with substance abuse. Multiple guests have alleged that their addictions were actually enabled by employees of Dr. Phil. And they allege that they did this in order to boost the show's rating. And some of these allegations and the details of them are incredibly disturbing. And in this particular story, I remember seeing this episode and now knowing this backstory behind it, it's horrible. Todd Herzog was a winner of the show Survivor, which followed a bunch of people that were put out into the middle of nowhere and had to basically survive. Well, he won that show and he was struggling with alcohol abuse. He arrived to film his 2013 episode and went into his room to find a full bottle of Smirnoff vodka. This is so inappropriate when you are showing up for a show, especially with something with a title like Dr. Phil, we're here to help you. And they know you're there for your addiction to alcohol, but you walk in, you go in your room and you have it literally laid out for you. He also alleged that he was given a to calm his nerves. Which I've never taken before in my life. And I know that can be a deadly combination. So why it was given to me, I don't know. During his episode, he actually had to be carried out on stage by staff of the Dr. Phil show and put in the chair. And they continued to film with him regardless of the fact that he had a blood alcohol content of 0.263, which is more than three times the legal limit. And he would say, I've never talked to a guest who was closer to death. I've never talked to a guest who was closer to death than this one. Knowing that they allegedly provided him with alcohol in his room that contributed to him being in this state of mind on his episode is horrific. Dr. Phil declined to make a comment, but a spokesperson for the show told People that the article does not fairly accurately describe the methods of Dr. Phil, the TV show, or its mission to educate millions of viewers about drug and alcohol addiction. So the show went on to deny that they exploit anybody for views. However, there was another guest that was six months pregnant and had a addiction. When she showed up to film her episode, she says that she wasn't given any sort of medical team or anybody to, you know, supervise her, which I think if you know somebody is struggling with drugs or alcohol, and you're putting them on this show and your whole goal and everything that you stand for is to help people that you would probably offer them some sort of medical team when they arrive, but no. This girl was having withdrawals, so she ended up having to go to the hospital because I mean, she's addicted to hair. She shows up to be on an episode of Dr. Phil's show. They offer her absolutely no medical team whatsoever. She doesn't get help there, goes back to the Dr. Phil show, and the staff ends up giving her a ride to Skid Row to find And not only did they take her there, but they also filmed it to go on this episode. Another woman by the name of Marianne Smith had her niece on the show in 2012, and she said that she had contacted Dr. Phil with the intention of helping her break her addiction. And when she showed up to film her episode, she was having major withdrawals. The staff approached her and allegedly told her where she could find 
which was again on Skid Row. Staff members of the Dr. Phil show are told not to detain any guests or do anything to prevent them from whatever behavior that they are exhibiting. And I can understand, you know, why they're told to not get involved. But other people would probably argue that they're getting involved in the opposite. Like you won't get involved to help them if they need help, but if they're looking for the said drug, how they put alcohol in the room for the winner of Survivor, I would argue that you're enabling in the opposite. Like you're giving them the thing that you can include in your show to boost the ratings and make it more exciting but when it comes to interfering in some sort of helpful way, that's where you draw the line. And it's also strange that he talks about how he wants to help people and he's there to offer them some sort of service, something that they need. But when they show up, they're not given any sort of medical team to help treat them when they're having withdrawals. Now the allegations against Phil have continued throughout the years and a lot of them have come from employees of his show. There are a lot of employees that raise their own alarms about the treatment of the guests. There was one lawsuit that was filed against him and his production company where it accused them of false imprisonment for trapping employees in a room and threatening them with leaks to the media. Leah Rothman also alleged that guests had complained that their lives were ruined after being on the show, with one of them attempting to take their own life. She would go on to say that his primary interest was not about helping people at all, that it was actually about ratings and money. Dr. Phil would go on to deny all of these allegations and one of his representatives actually accused Leah of being a disgruntled employee. There was another employee whose job was to check in the audience and basically make sure everything was going okay with the studio audience. She alleged that she was berated by a supervisor that was also incredibly verbally abusive to other employees and that their jobs would regularly get threatened and they were continuously screamed at. Currently more than a dozen former and current employees have come out and they have all said that they've experienced verbal abuse in a workplace that fosters fear, intimidation, and even racism. Seven of the employees say that guests were often brought onto the show when they were already in a vulnerable state and are manipulated and treated unethically. These staff members also alleged that they would have a lot of guests on that would be struggling with their mental health, but that the staff and employees were not trained on how to properly handle these guests. And even more disturbing, there was one former employee that alleged that there was a girl that had came on the show that had prescribed medication and that they were instructed to not let her take her prescribed medication so that it would make her look more unstable during her episode. 11 of these employee allegations alleged that their own mental health was damaged at the expense of working for Dr. Phil with their bad working conditions. And one said that they would literally have nightmares about doing something wrong. And apparently when they quit, they actually needed therapy from being on the Dr. Phil show, which they described it as being strange. You're working on a show with someone that is supposed to help people, right? Like that's his main goal. But then his own employees and staff members need to get therapy outside of the show themselves because of the conditions of working on the show. Two current and 10 former employees said that it was a common occurrence to be screamed at and berated by an executive producer, Carla Pennington, and other senior staffers. There was apparently like favoritism that went on with people who worked on the Dr. Phil show and different levels. The lower level that you were at, they would get treated the worst. Many of these employees would would describe the environment on the Dr. Phil show as a war zone. Apparently Carla would allegedly slam doors, call employees the R word, idiots, stupid, and that she had a lot of moments where she was just full on screaming and yelling. Apparently this would result in some of the employees in tears. One employee said that Carla had reprimanded her so severely that she couldn't breathe. And when she was looked dead in the eyes by Carla, that she was saying things to her like, do you even know what day it is? Do you even no, are you that stupid? Just berating her and belittling her. And with the 
racism that allegedly goes on behind the scenes of the Dr. Phil show. Seven of the employees said that they were encouraged to perpetuate racist stereotypes on screen, while two others alleged that they experienced racism behind the scenes. They were allegedly discouraged from booking people of color, and five employees alleged that Carla and other senior producers would openly mock guests who came on the show, specifically making remarks about the appearance and behaviors of the black guests, as well as mocking how Latino guests spoke. And of course, a spokesperson for the Dr. Phil show came out and said that basically all of these employees are lying. None of it's true. Dr. Phil's attorney came out and said that he supports and believes in Carla Pennington and her team of supervising producers and co-executive producers. His attorney said, Carla does not behave inappropriately. She has the complete confidence of Dr. McGraw. She is beloved by her staff personally and respected professionally. The allegations against her are absurd and demonstrably false. It is indeed rare for an executive producer to be in that position for 20 plus years, and she has been with CBS for almost 35 years. Now, there are current employees of the Dr. Phil show that have come out and said that working there is great and that they have not seen any of the things that Carla or Dr. Phil has been accused of. There are other people that have come out and said that it is well known in Hollywood that working on the Dr. Phil show is a toxic environment. Like it's something that is apparently talked about and discussed like as something you don't want to do. Like you don't want to work on the Dr. Phil show because it's toxic, allegedly. Now all of these allegations against the Dr. Phil show and the staff, there are a lot of them. And it's really hard to not see some truth in maybe some of these allegations because there's so many. It's not like one or two people here and there. It's a lot, like that is a lot of people to all conspire together to make up things. And it's not just the allegations that are currently going on. There has been a lot in the past as well. And even if you take these allegations out of it and you just sit down and you watch an episode of Dr. Phil, you can kind of see it for yourself. There are some of them where you're watching it where it really does feel exploitive or just the things that Dr. Phil says. I have heard him say things on so many occasions where I'm like, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> I feel like when you watch the show, you can kind of see some of the toxicity shine through on its own just with what they film. But I mean, this isn't even just the Dr. Phil show. This is with a lot of shows on television. You guys need to let me know your thoughts on this. For me, I feel like when I'm listening to these allegations against the Dr. Phil show, and I've seen a lot of episodes, it's really hard for some of the toxicity not to shine through the cracks when you've watched it yourself. Now, as I said, all of these allegations are just allegations and they have come out and denied all of them. I'm not saying any of them are true. I'm not saying any of them are false. I'm just telling you guys what is out there and you can form your own opinion on what you think about it. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up because when you guys do that, it lets me know that you would like to see more videos like this. And, and yeah, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you guys for another video very soon.